the book is all about. But look, let me say what an honour it is to be invited to participate in this event. Um, uh, you know, the launch, the West Papua launch for Paul Lee's book. Um, I also pay my respects to the traditional landowners, the Wurundjeri and Kulin Nation, who are always past, present, and emerging. Also, I want to acknowledge Jacob Rumbia, uh, who's dedicated his life to uh, the independence of the West Papua, survived 10 years in Indonesian jails, several bullet wounds, and many human winters. <laughs> also acknowledge uh, Louise, as you have all of these. Um, you know, the tireless work, dedication to the cause knows no bounds. Um, I've been in book publishing for the best part of three decades, and what keeps me interested is that every book is a window into another world, and Paulie opens the window very wide and allows us into his extraordinary life. Um, when I first received the manuscript, I thought, oh, another memoir from an aging rock star, you know, but I read it and uh, there's a little bit of that in there, but I read it and, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and I was, I was laughing out loud, I was shedding tears and by the end of the book, I was believing in miracles. Um, and as you've heard, Tony Paul, his brother, was murdered by the uh, Indonesian military in Timor in 1975. Um, and one of the main themes of the book uh, is that Paulie harnesses that rage to become a punk rocker. But through the book you learn that um, he remains a punk rocker, but he becomes a punk rocker activist. Um, but Paulie, perhaps just take a step road a little bit, um, how you first, or maybe your first gig, yeah. uh, and how that led into the sort of life. Well, well first up, I'd... I'd like to say, but I, I want to thank Dave uh, from the bottom of my heart because when, when Peter and I finished the script, I sent it to all the different publishing companies and the first reply I got back was, listen, mate, we're not interested. No one cares about this team or West Papua. And I went, oh, I think I might have figured out the wrong thing here. But uh, this guy took it on board, has been an amazing supporter and uh, give him a round of applause, please. Thank you, Dave. I suppose the activism always started, well, when you name, name yourself after one of, uh, you know, Australia's most notorious trade unions who have got a bit of a political history, it just seemed a natural flow in for us to, um, you know, become a bit of a political act, the painters and dockers, and uh, not only did we play for the MUA in the day, but we also did, we used to play on building sites here in the city, and... Uh, there was a couple of uh, years there when instead of getting a, a barrel and a stripper, you got a barrel of the painters and dockers, you know, and, and that teaches you how to play because uh, if you're going on instead of a stripper, the guys want you to be entertaining. So we, we had to sort of learn that. But uh, it just sort of seemed to progress and, you know, meeting, you know, people like Kevin Bracken and, and Max Ward from the MUA, you know, seeing their politics, I sort of, that had a big effect on me and and the activism just sort of rolled into it. And, and, and sure, I always had a thing about East Timor because my brother was killed up there, but I, I honestly have to say that it wasn't until I met, you know, Gil Santos and Teresa Santos here that, you know, I, they became my mates and, that, and I sort of, you know, that's why I got involved because they were my friends and I, and I, I could never believe them though, like the way they would say, one day East Timor is going to be independent. And I think these, these crew are crazy. That's never going to happen, ever, you know. And uh, But they just persisted and persisted. And, um, you know, East Timor, all these years I've been bloody playing for a free East Timor. We've still got a bloody English queen, you know, in this country. Right? <laughs> it pisses me off, you know. We're going to be needed. But anyhow, but... Um, also, you know, with the West Papua and stuff, I'll never forget, because um, I worked at the Herald Sun as a music journalist as well, and I met this guy, um, 50 Cent, you know, the big rapper, and um, he was telling me, and, and, he, and he wrote the press conference, and was, oh, wow, 50 Cent, you're so heavy. He said, oh, you're not doing the job of body. 
And, uh, and then a couple of weeks later, I was with Louise and Jacob, and I told them that story, and Jacob said, oh, I've got four. You know? <laughs> and I went, what? And he said, yeah, I've got four bullet wounds, you know? And I said, well, how did that happen? He said, well, I had to sleep down this creek all night, and the Indonesians were stepping over me, and and then I heard his story, and he's, um, you know, I've got God, further into West Papias, because Jacob is such a lovely, wonderful fellow that just sort of inspired me to help out, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love the exchanges between you and Gil in the book. Um, Gil is quoted as saying, Paul is very passionate. He has a lot of heart for Timor. Whenever I asked him to do something for Timor, he never asked why. He really trusted me. We shared the same grief. We still didn't know where my father was buried. He was killed in 1975, and most of my uncles also. That's the ultimate price you pay for freedom. Mm -hmm. And then a great a few lines, you and the book, if I could just mention those. Yeah. Um, Gil is no doubt one of the best known Timorese musicians in the world. Over the years, I've seen so many people seek his help. He never says no. In rock and roll, there are so many who make promises and you never hear back from them. People think popular music these days is all about chart position and marketing in T-shirts. But Gil showed me there is still a part of that that remains revolutionary and life-changing. Yeah. And I guess you've sort of learned the power of song as well through your association. Well, once again, I have to say, yeah, it was Gil who taught me that. And Gil said to me, one well, you seem to be taking all this anger, uh, anger out on yourself. You know, just chill out a bit. And he, and he said... Uh, you know, guitars are just as effective as guns when it comes to revolution. And I looked at him and went, wow, you know, that's an amazing thing to say. And he's proved, he's proved me right because we have now, we laugh because we've done gigs for the communists in the Jesuits here in Melbourne, the capitalists at the bank just up the road here, the, <laughs> the, the anarchists uh, in Sydney, at one of their collectives. We, 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 have, we have just played all, all around the world in Brazil. We went over and did some gigs there. And uh, as long as Gil's by my side, I can do anything. No worries, you know. He, he props me up. And plus, he's a musician, you know. I'm just this <laughs> wanker that sort of <laughs> screams into a microphone, you know. He's, he's the he's the people brains. Yeah. And you were there on Independence Day in, in Delhi. Yeah, wow. That was... Uh, an incredible moment, you know, to go up there with, you know, Hill and all the other crew in the Dilly All-Stars and um, to finally have their country independent after all these years, you know, was amazing. And um, actually there was a big independence concert. I can remember the Portuguese had their own enclosure backstage and it was full of, like, all the best alcohol and liquor and, and food and... And they said, oh, no, this is Portuguese. And it's the only time I've ever seen Gil lose it, you know. And he walked over and he said, listen, you know, we've just got our independence. You think you're stopping us from coming in here? You know, this is our country. <laughs> so we hit the tent. And I think we Gil drank the whole, the, whole, <laughs> the wine alone, you know. And uh, I, do, I do have to really do a shout out to his mum, Berta Santos, who is sort of like my Terry's mum, who looked after me so many times I've gone to Timor. Berta's going, look, look after Paulie, put him just lie down there, Paulie, and you'll be right. She's fed me and one of the greatest cooks on, and I love it dearly. Yeah. Yeah. And Paulie, you seem to have had just about as many lives as, as Jacob. And, and yeah. um, you have been given your last rights in hospital before. Uh, you were, uh, a, a, a liver was found to... Well, people look at me and go, that's bullshit, Paulie. But listen, I, I, I was in the hospital and someone said, see you later, alligator. You know, you're out of here. I woke up at the end of my bed. There was this little nun, you know, and I was so sick for 10 minutes I was talking to her until I realised she was quite skinny. And I said, where are you from, sister? And she said, oh, this is a little country called Timor Leste. And I said... Is that some kind of a joke, you know? Is this for his tone videos or something? And uh, she said, no. And I said, oh, you know, my brother was one of the Balibo Five and I played a baby. And she said, not the Dilly All-Stars. And I said, yeah. And she said, oh, 
you guys got some uh, food up to me my village once. Well, you know, why are you actually here? And I said, well, look, I need a new liver. But they've told me there's no way that uh, I'm going to get one in time or I can't find a, a match, you know. And she said, this little no, 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 I don't know. <laughs> and I thought, gee, it's a bit, you know, late to be drinking the alcohol system. <laughs> And I thought she was running and drinking the oxygen, you know. <laughs> I said, this little man's off a rocker, you know. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, I've got sisters in Timor. I'll ring them and we'll pray to the big fella. But if we get one, you've got to look after the kids up there. Is that a deal? And I sort of went, oh, um, yeah, okay. You know, never thinking anything further of it. And... Um, Next morning, after waiting 18 months, this doctor comes running and going, unbelievable, Paulie, perfect match for you that just came in. And, uh, you know, tw- I think it was 12 people were for 22 hours putting it in. I can't even tell you what, what, it, what they did, you know, but I was awake and then three days later, you know, they're sending me home from the Austin, which was un- unbelievable. Yeah. And then you, you visited... Timor again, and uh, you made good of that, uh, that promise. Well, well, we went up there to um, make the Balibo movie. Gil and I were hired as sort of um, musical consultants, which meant I hit the bar a lot, and Gil actually <laughs> advised on musical consultancy, you know. But, um, yeah, and Mom, but before we left our mate here in Melbourne, a guy called Abel Gutierrez, you might know, he said... Oh, Paul, there's this little group of nuns up there. You've got nothing. Just drop in and say good day to them, will you? Up to the lowest of the low. And I can remember there was a teacher at school that used to describe me as the lowest of the low. So, good on. And then my people. You know? <laughs> so, um, excuse me. me and Gil went and met these little nuns. And, um, yeah, there was five nuns on one motor. So, you know, uh, doing a campaign and the Australians being the, the great loving people they are, we raised uh, $80,000 to buy them a new, you know, uh, transit van to help them get around all these things up there. So, yeah, and that's just gone on and on and on. The reason I'm a bit tired today and buggy is just that the two nuns in town, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Now I'm at 4.30, like... You right, Paulie? And I'm like, sister, go back to bed. And like, go and pray for me for a few hours. Like, Come on, we're up. Like, oh. You always talk about them as being the real punks. Oh, they are. They don't muck around. And uh, I love the way they sort of, you know, the, it's the sisters who like sisters do, not men, you know. And in you know, remarkable. And they don't do positions or for... Um, uh, you know, making money or, or buying big cars or houses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so your activism in the East Timor has continued with the West Papua movement. There's obviously parallels to be drawn, both uh, you know, European colonial powers and uh, Indonesian military you know, occupations. So what sort of lessons have you learned along the way? Well, the main lessons, you know, I would say to the West Papians is, you know, like what Teresa and you told me, like never give up, you know, and you think something's impossible and uh, it happens, you know, and uh, you know, I can remember meeting Jose Ramos Water at Louise's place and he was sitting on the couch and he had, he was this funny little guy with a bow tie and this um, broken down suitcase. I said, who are you, mate? And he said, oh, I'm East Timor's foreign minister, and one day we're going to be an independent country. And I thought, this guy's got this nutty, you know, he's, there's no way that it's going to happen. And sure enough, um, and you look at him now, Mr. President. I love that, you know, and um, incredible. So, yeah, to the West Patterns, I say, don't get up. And I mean, I look around the room today, and uh, it's amazing people who are here supporting West Papua today. So thank you all for coming to support the West Papuans because they need our help. And uh, and there's so much about West Papua I'm discovering all, all the time. Like what Jake, you were telling me the other day that your ancestors were all Jewish people from Spain. Like that flipped me out. You know, I didn't know there was that connection through there. And um, 
Yeah, incredible. It's an incredible place. But you, you, you yourself have spent time up in uh, Papua New Guinea, so you know that sort of feel that. Yeah, I lived in PNG for eleven years. Um, it's a lot of bad press, but um, you know the, the people there are just incredibly generous, hospitable. You know, it's just like a second home. Uh, so I do now feel you know a real natural empathy for all these people. But Paulie, look, I really want to thank you for writing your book and you know, sharing your story, and um, it really shows that you know through generosity of spirit. Um, each of us as individuals can really make a change and make a difference.